All right, so we're now talking about water, the universal solvent. Uh, to this, I say buckle in, kids, because this is not the shortest one we've got. All right, so basically, you want to be able to explain how water changes the particles, what it, what it does to certain types of particles when it breaks them down into solution um, as a solvent, how it acts as a solvent. Now, once again, this all has to do with the polarity of water. All right, so what's the point? Basically, we want to describe how the pole, how water's polarity affects its ability to be a solvent, okay? And we also want to describe how water acts on various solutes to dissolve them in solution. And you want to be able to summarize these by the end, okay? You want to be able to do this, 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 and a couple of them you're even going to want to be able to do a diagram. Um, all right, so let's get into it. This should be funny at the end. If you don't understand this joke right here by the end of this video, um, watch it again. All right, so solvents. We're going to talk about two here. First, they can be classified in two types, polar, non-polar. Water, as we've mentioned, ad nauseum, and we'll probably mention it again, is polar. Um, over here, and hopefully you can see straight away why it's not, but this is a non-polar one, and we call this hexane. Now, basically, like dissolves like. So a polar solution will develop, well, sorry, will dissolve. A polar solvent will dissolve a non -polar, a polar solute. A non-polar solvent will dissolve a non-polar solute. Now, that's important. Okay, so let's go. All right, polar solvents will dissolve polar solutes. There we go, like water. Um, non-polar solvents will dissolve non-polar sol solutes. Water is a polar solvent. We can see that here. So the negative ends, the positive ends. Um, it's known as the universal solvent. It dissolves a very large range of stuff, but not all. Not all, however. That's ridiculous. Um, I should say, however, not all. So the point is, it doesn't dissolve everything. Now, this is a good. This is why you should proofread your stuff before you do it. Okay, over here, hexane. If you have a look at it, even if this was all oxygen, I mean, it would make no sense because it wouldn't do that molecularly. Doesn't matter. Not the point. Even if it's all oxygens, all fluorines, which are super electronegative compared to the hydrogen, even if that was the case, this universal covering all the way around would stop it from being polar. It would have the same charge all the way around the outside. And we see here with the 3D structure, so it's like hydrogen flat, hydrogen coming out towards us, away from us towards us, away from us. We can see that even in the 3D structure, it's it's just uniform all the way around. Okay, so that's what makes hexane non-polar. And there are a bunch of other ones. All right, soluble ionic compounds. So ionic substances are soluble in water. The, we're gonna talk about salt here. You know this, uh, this is why we can dissolve them. So the ionic bonds break in the crystal lattice. So the, the water is able to break apart the ionic bonds. Um, the hydrogen bonds between the water molecules break. So step one, the lattice breaks down. Step two, the hydrogen bonds. Now, even as a liquid, there are hydrogen bonds. The the oxygen is attracted to another water molecule's hydrogens. They just, you know, and that's what gives water its viscosity and shape and all that sort of stuff. So six molecules of water surround each free ion. Now, it says two in each axis. What that means is, if our molecule is here, because the picture coming up is going to be in 2D, so it won't make as much sense. So there's one axis, so there's a water there, water there. There's another axis like this, okay, so that's our X, Y of the graph. And if you've seen a graph with three axes, X, Y, Z, the one that says the one's coming out at it, it's all 3D graph. So hydrogen, 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 oh, sorry, water, 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 water. They're all around it as hydrogen bonding. Okay, so the positive ends of the water molecule, which is the hydrogen, they attach to the negative ion, the anion. Okay, the negative ends, which is the oxygen, they attach to the cation, cation, I don't know, I'm going to have cation because it still says ion, the positive ion. Again, proofread your stuff before you do it. Um, and that, oh, sorry. so free ions will still exist. Not all of them are going to be surrounded. Those ions that are 
surrounded. They, they're not free ions. They won't conduct electricity. But enough free ions will still exist that you can conduct electricity. And this is why the more salt you've got there, the higher electricity, the higher the conductivity goes up. Okay, so it looks like this. Okay, so here's your sodium chloride. That all breaks apart. A bunch of, I don't know why they've used five, uh, a bunch of the oxygens will surround and attach to um, the sodium ion. Remember, it has this structure here, so it's like sodium ion. Oh, <laughs> previous one was better. Um, so yeah, so that surrounds that, and that's cool. Uh, here we've got the positive the positive ions, the, sorry, the positive ends of the hydrogen, they surround the negative ion. Cool. So that's actually, that's how solubility works, and that's pretty cool. All right. So they can all, they're also soluble, mole, soluble molecular compounds. Okay. So polar molecules, such as sucrose, which you know is sugar, will also dissolve in water. We've all done this. Um, there's sucrose dissolved in that. Actually, there's not much in there, but anyway, it's kind of empty. So... Uh, the intermolecular forces. Now, inter, between. So if these were two sugar molecules next to each other, intermolecular forces are there. Intramolecular, so is there. All right. So intermolecular forces break up, break the sugar crystal apart. Okay. So they, the intermolecular forces break, sugar crystal breaks apart. Some bonds in sucrose are polar OH bonds, and that's why this one here, the stick and ball bonds, because it shows us where the positive ends and the negative ends, see? So we're all getting there. Um, hydrogen bonds occur between the oxygen atoms in the sugar and the H atoms in the water. Cool. There are no free ions, so there's no electricity, because this, none of this, this doesn't break down, okay? So there are no ions there. But... These oxygen atoms here, the water atoms, the water molecules, do their thing around it, and that's how it dissolves. That's how it breaks apart, and it's surrounded by water. It gives it a uniform texture. Okay, and it looks like this. Alrighty, so, soluble molecular compounds, part two. Now, these are two which are stated in your syllabus, and that's why we're going to go to these ones in particular. Hydrogen chloride, you know it as something else. We're going to talk about it's hydrogen chloride. It reacts with water. Now, this doesn't react with water. This does not change at all. This is a different type of solubility. So it reacts with water. All right, so it breaks apart. So the HCl, hydrogen chloride, is neutral, and it reacts completely with H2O. So it just breaks apart. All right. Now, hydro, hydro, hydrogen chloride is not hydrochloric acid. It only acts as an acid once it's reacted with water. See, it's a gas, starts off as a gas here, and then it reacts with water. The way we actually make hydrochloric acid, the really strong stuff, the concentrated stuff, and we don't ever make this at school, we buy it like this, is you bubble hydrogen chloride, the gas, through water, and it reacts. All right, so... This is what we call an ionization reaction, which is, is, I like this, this is cool. So basically, this molecule breaks apart to form ions. All right, cool. That's pretty awesome. So it breaks apart, but and we get the chlorine atom on its own. Cool. And an extra hydrogen is attached to this water. Now, that's not stable. This hydrogen will become an ion. Right, so, so there's your negative ion, there's your positive ion. Sweet. Okay, so the ionization reaction occurs. And that's why we draw it like this. Okay, so that's the that's the actual, the full reaction. But we can summarize it so that it just looks like this. And that's what you've seen before. That's why it goes in as a gas, liquid, aqueous, aqueous. And now you can actually see how this aqueous part works. Um, the reason it's not, you know, just, I don't know, the reason we write it as aqueous is because each one of these, actually that'd be that, yeah, that'd be that way, is surrounded by a bunch of high, uh, water molecules. All right, cool. So, partially soluble molecular elements, oxygen gas. This is really important because it's necessary for all life. So, you know, 
we need it now um we'll, we'll also get into where to so fish obviously they breathe in dissolved oxygen but you breathe dissolved oxygen um the lining of your of the alveoli in your lungs is moist and the reason it's moist is the only way to get oxygen from the outside to the inside is to use a moist barrier that it has to dissolve into and then gets pulled across that's how it works all right so the o2 molecules and water molecules attach with weak dispersion forces now what does this actually mean what this means is see these negative parts here this is so cool these negative parts it's what we call an induced dipole so it's not a permanent dipole it's an induced dipole the oxygen gets too close to the water to the water molecule this negative excessively negative part of the oxygen molecule repels some of some of the electrons that would have been here just to chill out over here so it's got less electrons here we now have a dipole it's an induced dipole as soon as this all this moves away from it boom it'll, the dipole disappears all right so the covalent bonds in non-polar o2 they don't break they just again we get this induced dipole and this means there are no free ions therefore no electro electrolyte and it's not electro electrically conductive all right insoluble covalent network structures we're, we're gonna i told you this is a long one i'm, I'm very sorry we're, we're chewing through it all right sand so why doesn't the sand dissolve into the beach well here we go we're gonna find out so strong covert covalent um, bonds throughout the network okay now again that network it just means that that's a covalent bond that's a covalent bond they're all covalent bonds it looks like a crystal lattice structure but they're all covalent bonds water can't break these it's way too strong um so silicon dioxide it won't dissolve all right insoluble compounds with large molecules now sometimes when you have a very large molecule the water just can't get around it it's too big so um Polymers, so large repeating molecules. The mer is the small subunit. Okay, so a monomer is this one here, and a polymer is this one here, which is, you know, it's there. There you go. Each one of these is your ethylene and ethylene, separate ethylenes, and you can see that it just goes on. Now it can go on for many, many times, or it can go on for short amount no, depends but they're so big that the water molecules can't separate them so they don't dissolve and that's cool all right so here's our summary of it you should once you've taken your notes from all this stuff you should definitely knock this table up it's a good summary it's, it's a great way to have now remember for each one of these particularly these ones you want to be able to show how that works you might even want to be able to draw a diagram for each of them okay so that's useful to know all right that's it kids um see you in class